In previous videos, we've talked about how the compiler checks your code for flaws before creating a new program. And we've briefly shown that sometimes, when you make a mistake, the compiler will spit out some messages instead of producing a new program. I'm now going to formally introduce you to and give you some strategies on how to decipher and fix them. The compiler spits out two different types of messages errors and warnings. Errors are the most common you'll see. We'll come back to warnings in a little bit. Errors are issues bad enough that it prevents the compiler from successfully compiling your code. These must be corrected before the compiler can make sense of your code and produce a sane program. Even if the compiler might be able to guess what you meant to say, it won't, because if it guesses wrong, it would be incredibly hard to figure out what's going on in your program. So it just points out these errors to you and asks you to fix them and try again. When you get errors, I suggest just starting by finding where the issue is first, before even reading the message. The compiler will spit out two numbers beside each error, the line and the column. I've never really cared about the column, but the line is important. Just jump directly to that line. Without reading this error, we can just see if anything jumps out at us. In this case, it might be obvious that we're missing a semicolon here since the line below it has one, and this line doesn't. But if it didn't jump out at you, now try to decipher the message for clues. In this case, it says expected semicolon before printf. Then it shows a nice little diagram saying, maybe you need a semicolon here. The key is expected semicolon. So when we look, we can see that indeed, we're missing a semicolon. We can add that to fix the error. When you're getting started, a lot of the errors will mean nothing to you. That's okay. It's something you'll get better at as you read more and get more familiar with the terms. Unfortunately, they design error messages to be fast to understand once you know the language well, not for when you're learning. For now, just look for keywords that do make sense to you and follow the steps I'm outlining. Over time, they'll, they'll start to make more sense. Also, I'd strongly recommend you work through the errors first to last and just fix them one by one. As the compiler encounters errors, the code starts to make less and less sense to it. It's like it can't tell what's real anymore. So later messages can sometimes not be true. See, look, with this code down here, this error isn't real. It's saying that it expects a semicolon after this line. But even if we add one, it keeps saying that it needs one. It makes no sense. The compiler is getting very confused because up here, we forgot to close this quote. So it can't tell which part of our code is code and which part is just text that we want the program to print out. But if we go up to the first message, it says pretty clearly that we're missing a quote. It says on line 11, missing terminating quote character. The rest of the messages just get less and less trustworthy. Because of this, I'd suggest focusing on the first error message, fix it, compile again, and then take on the next first error message until it's all good. FYI, to make this process easier, you can use the up and down keys on your keyboard to find previously executed commands in your terminal. So you can just hit up instead of retyping the GCC command every time. If after all these steps you're still not able to fix the errors, there's a few more things you can try. Look at other examples of similar code. Sometimes we're blind to the things we write, where it looks totally correct. So pull up other examples of code and see if it matches. Sometimes I'll even copy paste the working example into my broken code and redo it in chunks to see what I'm missing. In this case, I was missing this comma. And lastly, there's one other thing you can use to help narrow down where errors are coming from. Comments are text you can add to your code that's meant for other humans to read but it doesn't affect what the code does. People use them for a few purposes, to describe what the code is doing and why, to add little headers to sections of code that are related, or even as mundane as copyright notices. Whatever you put in them, it doesn't matter to the compiler. They're completely ignored. Comments can be written in two ways. First, you can write a single line comment with two forward slashes. Anything after the forward slashes will be ignored by the compiler. If you want to comment out multiple lines, you can do that using slash star, like this. 
Anything between the slash star and star slash is considered a comment and ignored by the compiler. Comments can also be a quick way to disable some code without deleting it. I have this code, which spits out a form. I'm trying to get it to print out a rectangle, but it also prints out all of this other stuff, which makes it tricky for me to focus just on the box. Instead of temporarily deleting those lines, I can instead just comment them out. Since comments are ignored, it's as if those lines don't exist. And then after I fix my box to my liking, I can uncomment the rest of the lines to complete the program. Back to errors, temporarily disabling code can be useful when trying to narrow down the code, causing the error if the messages don't make sense. When we try to compile this code, it points at our files and ders variables here and says error expected declaration specifiers. This doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what a declaration specifier is. And when I look at these lines, they look totally fine to me. I even copy pasted my code from before. So what I'm going to do is keep commenting out code in chunks to see if I can narrow down where the error is coming from. Since my variable assignment looks OK, I'll start with commenting out the printf statement. That reduces the number of errors, but my code is still broken. Let's also comment out my assignment. Less, but I still don't understand what these parameter errors are. I don't even know what a parameter is. So we'll comment out my declaration as well. OK, now we only have two error messages left. They both seem to be complaining something about the braces. Now I clue into what's going on. There's only one closing brace here. We're missing the opening one. Now it compiles OK, so we can start bringing back our code in chunks. I'll bring back my declarations. Still compiles OK. Now the assignments. Still good. Next, the printf. Now we get a single error message left, which says expects a bracket before files, which doesn't make any sense to me. But when I compare to other examples, I see that I forgot a comma over here. Now we fixed all of the errors in our program. And lastly, Before I mention that errors aren't the only thing you can get from the compiler, you can sometimes get warnings as well. A warning isn't bad enough that the code can't be compiled, but most of the time it's doing something that you don't want it to do, and it's likely going to cause a bug in your program. Not many warnings are enabled by default. To turn on most warnings during compilation, add dash w all after gcc. Once you do that, you'll get some helpful ones. For example, if you added a percentage %d to a printf but didn't add the variable you want to print. While this still can compile it by C's rules, it's obviously a bug since the program will print random values. Or if you declared a variable and tried to use it but forgot to assign a value. If you do this, the variable can have random values in it. This is a tricky one since sometimes the program will operate as expected and you might not notice the bug. When I run this code on Linux, it pretty much always prints zeros. But if I compile this on Mac OS, I get random values. So you might think that your code is working perfectly. Then you submit your code to get graded by your TA, who uses a Mac, and everything breaks. It's not an error because there's some advanced cases where you'd want to do this, but in most circumstances, you likely didn't intend that. In general, I'd recommend compiling with dash w all, or dash wall, if you will. Most of the time, the warnings are going to cause bugs in your programs. So it'll help you catch the issues before running the program. On CodeAesthetic.io, I have a bunch of programs with errors, and I ask you to try and fix them. Some of the programs have some stuff in them that we haven't covered yet, but I believe you'll be able to get them working anyways. <laughs>